I want to provide a brief introduction to prospect theory. Now, this is an alternative to traditional mean variance theory developed by economist Harry Markowitz in 1959, as well as the utility theory of mathematician Daniel Bernoulli in the 1700s. Prospect theory was developed by Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky in 1979. Uh, they were two psychologists, but they actually published the work in Econometrica. Kahneman would win the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2002 for this work. Uh, Tversky would have won as well, but he had passed away, and they don't um, award the Nobel to posthumously. Um, Markowitz, um, for his work in mean variance theory, also won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1990. Now, let's take a look at the differences between the two. In mean variance theory, People choose among alternatives based on the effect of the outcomes on the levels of wealth. In prospect theory, people choose based on the effect of outcomes on changes in their wealth relative to their reference point, so where they started from. Okay, Where in mean variance analysis, if you have more, that's better. If you have less, that's worse. Okay, But not where it changed, just what the absolute number is. In mean variance theory, people are risk averse in all of their choices. In prospect theory, people are generally perceived as risk averse when all changes in wealth are perceived to be gains, but risk seeking when all changes are perceived to be losses. Um, pro in prospect theory, people perceive losses more severely than they perceive gains of equal amounts. So there's this asymmetry which they refer to as loss aversion. That is, gaining 20 bucks doesn't make you, um, it doesn't give you as much satisfaction as the dissatisfaction you get from losing $20. So they're not symmetric in the gains and the losses. In mean variance theory, people treat risk objectively by its probability. In prospect theory, people overweight small probabilities, and this may lead uh, people to be risk-seeking in the domain of gains, like purchasing lottery tickets, and risk-averse in the domain of losses, like purchasing insurance. In mean variance theory, um, it implicitly assumes that the framing of alternatives does not affect choice. In prospect theory, framing of alternative uh, alternatives does affect choice. That is, how the question is posed or framed can determine the response that is given. So let's look at a, a few examples to get a feel for this. So consider two pairs of choices, A versus B and C versus D. So in A, it's a sure gain of 24,000. In B, it's a 25% chance to gain a hundred thousand and a seventy five percent chance to gain nothing. So if you look at this you can take twenty four thousand dollars for sure or you can take a gamble that has an expected value of twenty five thousand. In C and D, C is a sure loss of seventy five thousand and D is a seventy five percent chance to lose seventy five thousand or to lose 100,000, excuse me, and a 25% chance to lose nothing. And what Kahneman and Tversky found is that people, um, more people chose A than B, and more people chose C than D. Now, that contradicts mean variance theory where people are always risk averse. The choice of A over B is consistent with risk aversion. Right? They chose the sure thing, 24000 rather than taking the gamble with an expected value which was actually a little bit higher, 25000 The choice of C over D is consistent with risk-seeking. Both have the same expected loss, 75000 but D is clearly riskier because the loss could be 100000 Right, But since people don't want to lose the money, they're willing to take the gamble that maybe they don't lose anything at all. What about reference points? Okay, again, in prospect, prospect theory, gains or losses are determined relative to a reference point. 
let's take a look at a couple of examples here. You know, um, John receives a C minus and Linda receives a B plus. In standard utility theory, right, Linda should be happier, right? A B plus is clearly a much better grade than a C minus. But if Linda expected an A in the course, her reference point, and John expected to fail the course, his reference point, then John perceives the C minus as a gain, and Linda perceives the B plus as a loss. In fact, John is probably ecstatic that he doesn't have to take the course again. Linda is quite unhappy because she really thought she deserved an A in the course, so that's a loss to her. How about framing? Okay, how a question is posed or framed can oftentimes determine the response, right? Most of you have taken surveys, and it's some, when you take a survey, oftentimes it seems that they keep asking the same question. And what they're likely doing is framing the question differently to see if you're consistent in your responses. So uh, take a look at this example, okay? You have a medical treatment, A, that provides a 90% chance of a total cure and a 10% chance of death. You have medical treatment B provides a 10% chance of death and a 90% chance of total cure. Clearly, both treatments are exactly the same, right? The same outcomes. But studies have found that people would choo will choose A over B because they see the 90% first, and so they're thinking positively about the cure, where in B they see the probability of death first, and they're thinking of, you know, the bad outcome. So again, how the question is posed makes a difference. Let's take a look at how this looks graphically. Now, in standard utility theory, you have this concave shape, and you have wealth down here, and you have utility here, and this concave shape indicates risk aversion. Okay? It indicates diminishing marginal utility of wealth, that is, as you get wealthier, each dollar of wealth gives you less satisfaction, but it also implies risk aversion. All right, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but I have uh, a video that actually goes into this in quite a bit of detail, and I will post the link below. Let's take a look at what prospect theory looks like. Okay, This is what the utility function essentially looks like under prospect theory. Okay. Down here, it's convex, which indicates risk-seeking behavior. Up here, it's, it's concave, as the standard utility theory was, which indicates risk aversion. Okay? Under loss aversion, the utility function is defined in terms of losses relative to current wealth. So you have this reference point, right? So, you know, if the outcome is bad, Right, you're going to lose. So it depends on where you are. It doesn't depend on how much you have, right? So from the sort of from the previous example, I mean, if your reference point is an A and you get a B plus, you've lost. If your reference point is an F and you get a C minus, you're a winner, right? And you can do that with with financial amounts, right? You have two people who have five million dollars. If one person had a million dollars last year and has five million dollars this year, right, that's a big gain for them, right? They're going to be, a, the change in wealth is positive. If the person who has five million had ten million last year and now they have five, right, that's a loss to them and they're in this quadrant. Okay, there are also a couple of other examples. Um, this concept has not only been applied to finance, but to things like marketing where a marketer convinces the customer that not purchasing the good or service will lead to a loss. So, and you've seen these, not taking an SAT prep course will lead to lower scores or not using our, um, our tutorial service means your, your child will struggle in school. Not having your air conditioner ducts clean will lead to, you know, breathing poor quality air and asthma. Um, if you don't use our replacement windows, you'll have greater heating bills, right? So what they're trying to do is, is put a reference point in there and showing you that not having their good is going to lead to um, a uh, loss. So you can see that this is a little bit different from 
standard utility theory that we teach in finance, but um, is a cornerstone of um, behavioral finance and now, I guess, behavioral marketing as well. So um, perhaps I'll go into a little more depth in, in some other videos, but I just wanted to provide a brief introduction here.